Credit Suisse monthly economic outlook. Eurozone leaders have agreed on a profound rescue package for Greece, which calls on private bondholders to shoulder some of the burden. Nanette heckler Feyerderb, Head of Global Research for Private Banking and Asset Management, joins us today to explain the consequences of the deal. Nanette, how effective is the new aid package for Greece? Well, for Greece, it brings along two very important, uh, uh, very important steps in, in its way forward with respect to its public debt uh, issue. Firstly, it is uh, uh, prolonging the loan repayment periods. Um, it has a longer grace period with respect to EFS uh, funds. And secondly, it has also a longer period to pay back. And that's quite important because it improves the liquidity position uh, for, for Greece and uh, relieves it from this stress. Secondly, it brings along interest rates uh, that are lower and significantly lower than previously. Uh, and this is also a, a very important step towards solvability. However, Greece is still facing a lot of challenges, in particular addressing the structural deficiencies that it has with respect to its productivity. It has also the challenge to improve the tax collection, and all of that certainly still has to be uh, addressed. So it is an important step forward, but by no means uh, a solution in itself. Critics have discussed the case of a selective default. What are your perspectives on that? With respect to selective default, one has to assess whether it is going to have a financial market impact. In other words, whether credit spreads are going to increase as a result, so funding costs for sovereigns are going to increase as a result. And secondly, whether credit default swaps, which are insurance premia against credit risks, are going to increase as a result. And in this respect, it was quite important to have the International Swaps and Derivatives Association state that selective default would not trigger CDSs. Uh, and secondly, considering the cash bond market uh, where investors that are voluntarily participating in the exchange of bonds have already agreed to it and the others are really benefiting from it, this all has resulted already in a decline in credit spreads for Greece since the announcement of the package. So altogether, looking at the event of selective default, one has to come to the conclusion that it is probably a necessary technicality, but with little impact on the market in the end. Will the new rescue package prevent the crisis from spreading to other weaker economies in the Eurozone? Probably. It will not, uh, in the sense that the AFSF uh, has a firing power, financial firing power, uh, that is sufficient for, uh, for, for peripheral uh, countries that are rather smaller. Uh, but if it comes to countries such as Italy, for example, which has large amounts of debt outstanding, uh, the financial strength of the EFSF really is not yet at a level where it can give confidence back to markets with respect to the large issuers. So I'm afraid that uh, although there is a very strong uh, element of progress with that rescue package, at the same time, the market is nervous about uh, the larger economies, uh, such as Italy, that have a very uh, big debt outstanding. You recently became chair of the Global Economic and Strategy Group, the so-called GESG. Could you tell us about the objectives of the group? The GESG really brings together thought leaders from across the three divisions of Credit Suisse and across regions. It is a very powerful platform, hence, to discuss very important economic and financial developments. And the synthesis of that, the articulation of risks as well, are important inputs into the investment committee, along with the extensive preparation by our global research and asset management colleagues so as to form all together a very best practice tactical asset allocation process. You said you discussed the financial and economic developments. What are those at the moment? The balance of risks at the moment with certainly debt issues at the center uh, of market concerns, uh, but also the softening of economic data more recently uh, not to forget some of the trends that we have been observing 
in important emerging markets. Uh, China and Turkey have been among the uh, issues that we discussed at the last GSG. All of that painting the picture of the economic outlook that we are facing when deciding upon asset allocation today. How are the equity and bond markets performing? They perform as they usually do. When risk aversion increases, risky assets tend to suffer. This has been the case with equity markets. However, fundamentals remain supportive. This is also shown in some of the earnings that have already come through. On the other end, bond markets and in particular benchmark government bonds have been benefiting from the softening of the data as well as of the risk and the flight to what is still considered safe havens at the moment. But really interest rates have come to levels that are very low compared to the economic outlook. So a reversal of the recent um, market movements is very likely in our view. What's your view on the currencies market? At the moment, really, the dollar is uh, in the short run a little bit under pressure because of the US debt ceiling uh, issue. And more fundamentally, the dollar has not uh, any support from the interest rate differential that speaks in favor of it. Uh, at the other end, the euro is under uh, pressure because of the EMU uh, concerns that have been particularly uh, prevalent in currency markets. And hence, when you look at really the one currency that has been the strongest in the current environment, it's been the Swiss franc. It has acted as the absolute uh, uh, safe haven uh, among other currencies uh, and is probably uh, going to have still a risk premium that is very much uh, supporting it. On the other end, uh, it is very strongly economically correlated uh, with the Eurozone. It is overvalued against the Euro. Uh, so over the longer run, we would rather expect the Swiss franc to, uh, to depreciate towards what we consider is fair value with respect to its closest trading partner currency, the euro. To sum up then, how would you describe the current state of the global economy? The global economy at present is really characterized by very different perspectives. Developed markets in contrast to emerging markets, EMU countries versus non-EMU countries, and even within EMU core versus satellite. Altogether, when you aggregate it, I would say the economic picture doesn't look bad. On the contrary, there are elements of strength, such as the fact that the world population is growing. In many emerging markets, the middle class is emerging with more purchasing power. And this, for the long term, is synonymous to growth. However, at the moment, risk sentiment uh, has deteriorated and there seems to be a certain gap between sentiment and fundamental data. Thank you, Nanette. That was Nanette heckler Feyerderb, Head of Global Research for Private Banking and Asset Management at Credit Suisse. If you want to know more about the market situation or for investment ideas, visit the website creditsuisse.com markets or check out the online magazine in focus. Thank you.